20 or more, he'll be a handful tonight. Should be a fun one, JU and Florida. Return of Jordan Mincy, head coach for Jacksonville, former assistant with the Gators, Todd Golden. Begins his third year. Ruben Chinyelu wins the tip against Stefan Payne. And we are underway. As you can imagine, Florida in white, Jacksonville in green. Here's one of the newest skaters, Elijah Martin, to Chinyelu. Dodges a defender and lays it in. Also one of those transfers from the portal, Washington State. Chinyelu gets the first bucket of the night. Jacksonville starting five. Robert McCray, you heard Mark. Go through some of his accomplishments. Stefan Payne coming off a strong performance in the opener. Goes to work on Shinyelu and ties us up early. Meanwhile, the Gators, same starting five as the opener. A trio of guards that combined for 67 points. Clayton, Richard, and Elijah Martin. Add Shinyelu and Condon to that mix as well. There's Walter Clayton shooter, that 29 opening night on 10 of 15 shooting. Post to post, Condon goes strong and gets fouled. And Simi Wokeji, his first. Yeah, that's a possession we did not see in the first 10 minutes of the game. Todd Golden's group got a little shot quick as you take a look at the head gator in his third year here in Gainesville. And marked 24 wins last year. That was the most since 2016-17. Went to the SEC tournament title game. That was the first time in nearly a decade. Eventually falling to Auburn. They had that tough injury to Micah Hanlockton. Meanwhile, the return of Jordan Mincy. We talked to him and shoot around. He was an assistant under Mike White here in Gainesville for six seasons, 2015 to 2021. Part of a staff that went to four straight NCAA tournaments and had four consecutive 20-win seasons. Miss from Condon, rebound from Martin, and a Gator reset. Clayton down the lane, hangs and scores. That's that sneaky explosiveness I talked about. He, I think he's he surprises some people with his quickness, with his ability to get off the deck. Had the best scoring average for a season last year in nearly 20 years in Gator history. Bokeji from the parking lot. Yeah, the well day, out there. Yeah, the Dayton transfer played 82 games for the Flyers, but was really in kind of a, a role player mode. And the opener made his first start since 2021 season. Get a foul here. That's Wokeji fouls Condon. Take another look at the Wokeji three. Now this is what USF did very well. They made 13 against the Gators on opening night. Florida only made five. And that three-point differential, that minus 24, <laughs> you don't win a lot of games with that kind of number. And J.U. on the heels of just a 6 of 32 night from three against Trinity Baptist College, won by only 13. Richard, a Swiss on the feed from Clayton. That's his spot, the corner. Now, this is where USF had some success too early on is answering in transition. A little bit better job. Gators attack the pick and roll. Condon, the deflection. Richard, strong take, gets the roll. One of the things that this Florida team wants to do is play better defensively. And a lot of that starts with Elijah Martin and attention to detail. Yeah, they were in the 90s in terms of their defensive rating last year. The ceiling of this group, according to Todd Golden, is around 20 or 25. Backdoor feed, Jakari Spence in his first game back from injury. Now Richard turned his head on the backdoor cut. Condon bluffs the handoff. The feed, Chinyelu gets hit hard. Looking for the early big time stuff. How about big to big though off the bounce a little rejection off the pick and roll a you know, shovel pass kind of no look and, to and it. Munson who his head coach said has been his most pleasant surprise that's where you're supposed to take your fouls especially with a guy like Chinyelu and one of the things that Florida did extremely well in the opening game in Jacksonville against USF was shoot free throws they went there a lot, and they converted a lot, 82%. That was one of the biggest struggles for the Gators last season. It's at the free throw line, especially in their front court. 
Kinyalu, 51% from the line in his career. Kyle, it might be November, but you missed two free throws. It's just like a turnover all season long. Three. Now, you can't be that late on McCray. He is a sensational catch and shoot guy. And a turnover. Munson inside. Chingalu, the denial. And McCray, the preseason Atlantic Sun Player of the Year. High expectations for him, and here he gets the takeaway. Again, going way too fast. McCray, the kick, and a charge. Clayton takes it. That's one on the projected NBA draft pick, according to some. They think Robert McCray could be a second-round draft pick, according to some outlets. Yeah, he'll get a look. A good job by Clayton as the secondary defender up out of the arc in legal guarding position. Pays the price. One of the things, and I, I was talking to you yesterday about this, I watched a lot of games on opening night. I didn't have a game, so I got to watch a lot of games. And if there was a common theme, whether I was watching Southern Illinois and Charleston at noon or Florida later and every game in between, teams are so consumed with playing fast that they have kind of lost sight of shot selection, taking care of the ball. Well, the Gators turn it over. Martin throws it away. JU's tied this game at 10. Five out set, no real postman. Condon guards Munson on the perimeter, trying to fit one through. Dangerous pass for Zach Bell, nine to shoot. Brings in Thomas Howell, who his motor never stops. You saw that on opening night. This is where you see the versatility of Condon, though, because he starts as a four-man. When Chinyelu goes out, then he moves over to the five. Well, that's too easy. No ball awareness. That's Munson on the baseline out of bounds. Also, Denzel Aberdeen is on for the first time. Can play some of that point. Clayton step back. Minimal space. It does not matter. He is so good. His ball fake is so good. His step back is so good. I think he's one of the best three-level scorers in the country. Part of the Naismith watch list for one of the 50 best players in the country. First team All-SEC preseason, Walter Clayton Jr. Chris Arias on for the first time. He started the opener of the freshman late in the clock here with five. Now it's Spence. Has to hoist up and under. Clayton got a piece. Spence gets it back. Florida ball. Jordan Mincy, his return to Gainesville. We'll chat about it when you return. Exciting night for the JU headman. In the country, finally got his opportunity to be a head coach, and he made a big splash right away. You look, top first year head coach in the nation, won 21 games his first year, was oh so close, a win away from getting that automatic berth in the Atlantic Sun to an NCAA tournament. He's done a really good job, Mark, his fourth season. And of course, he was on the bench in Madison Square Garden right. for the Chris Chioza shot. I don't think I have to tell Gator fans <laughs> what the Chris Chioza shot is. Infamous night against Wisconsin to send the Gators to an Elite Eight. Floater up and in. That's Alex Condon. It's interesting because Coach Mincy took out Robert McCray right before that media timeout, but he's right back on the floor. He will not sit long tonight. Meanwhile, veteran forward Zimmy Wokeji picked up two early fouls. As McCray deep in his bag, the high roof scraping floater. That's one you've got to live with, though. You ran him off the line. He's attacking bigs. Tip your hat. What a sensational finish. Here's Aberdeen, one of the most athletic on this team. Slam the emergency break, plus the harm. I don't know that there was a more improved player over the last 10 games of last season than Denzel Aberdeen. The ball fake, the fade away. No reason to foul there by Munson, who's picked up two quick fouls. So already, well, kg has got two, Munson's got two. Foul trouble abound here for the Dolphins. You mentioned Denzel Aberdeen bursting onto the scene. Final four games was 13 of his final 23 from the floor. That big breakout yeah. game in the SEC tournament against Texas A&M, 20 points. Former state champion at Dr. Phillips, whose teammates with former Gator now Riley Kugel since transferred to Mississippi State. 
Again, no post player for Jacksonville. This is five on the perimeter. Zach Bell right on target from deep. Again, that's what Jacksonville wants to do. Ball reversal, spread the floor, shoot threes. Now they shot a lot of threes in their opener against Trinity Baptist. They just didn't make any. They were six of 32. Condon, physical down the paint, and a foul called on Donovan Rivers. Foul total, totals really skyrocketing right now. I believe that's the 16th foul. Ready for Jacksonville, none on Florida. Yeah, that's a long time to shoot the bonus. Jacksonville is trying to put great ball pressure on Florida's bigs, but it's coming with a hefty price. And you just can't keep sending guys to the free throw line. How about the development of Alex Condon? There's a lot that's expected out of him right. in his sophomore year, Mark. He's on the all-freshman team in the SEC. Now a starter. Had 40, yeah, had 45 blocks a year yeah. ago. He had 13 and five in that opener against USF. All five of his rebounds were on the offensive end. His first career start came in the NCAA tournament game against Colorado. Because of the injury to Hanlock. Right. Championship game of the SEC tournament. Micah Hanlock, and he will redshirt this year, will not play, recovering from that fractured leg. Bell already has one from deep, the off-legged runner. Stick back is in for Bell. Well, that's the other thing. You get so consumed with guarding the arc that you forget to rebound. The guards will have to rebound in this game for Florida to be successful there. High low. Looking for Condon the entire time. See who they get here. This is Rivers. That's a quick two. And that is Rivers. That's his second. You have three Dolphins with two fouls. Yeah, at some point you have to stop fouling. But JU has been so good on the offensive end right now. Florida doesn't have a grasp. How about this? The Gators have hit all seven of their field goals to begin, including two threes. And you look at Jacksonville, eight of 12 to begin their night, sticking around with three trays as well. Condon was 67% at the line last year. I, I think he's capable of being in the 70s. And that's kind of the benchmark for a, for a big. If, if, if you're better than 70%, that's good. Perfect there. It must be early in the season. I didn't jinx anybody. <laughs> Not yet. Wait for it. Yeah. First look, Mark at Sam Alexis, number four in white, two seasons at Chattanooga. Brings a, a rim protection for Todd Golden defensively this year. Now he's got a pretty good skill set on the offensive end. He'll play below the rim, but a tough guard. Elijah Martin gets the assignment on McCray. He can't switch. Remember I just said guards have to rebound. Here's Aberdeen. Oh, beautiful find. It's Alexis up high. Nobody stopped the ball, so Aberdeen took advantage. Aberdeen already the jersey untucked. That shows he means business. Tap to the backcourt, and it's Florida ball. This whole possession started with a great rebound by none other than six foot five Denzel Aberdeen. There's Aberdeen rebounding as a guard. You don't have to worry about an outlet. Nobody comes to him until real late. The step through, the little shuffle pass to his fellow big man in terms of the finish with Alexis. Easy points for the Gators. Aberdeen is set to have a big year. It's easy to say that. We're just the second game into the right. season. But he averaged just 10 minutes last year. He's going to be one of the first guards off the bench and jump out of the gym. Alexis spinning look, and we'll say Richard stepped out. I don't mind the move by Alexis. He can do that. But if he gets covered, then go ahead and kick it back, repost. Jacksonville sticking around for the hot gator start offensively. Enrico Borio on for the first time, the native of Brazil, the Dolphins. Spence says, why not? Got his own miss. Dump it down low, Stephon Payne. Again. Florida very sloppy on the defensive glass and JU right there. Here's the hard hedge that Florida worked on in practice yesterday. Now that's a little quick. That's the shot that they kind of shot early in the game. 
Your transition defense, people don't understand this. It starts with what kind of shot did you shoot on the offensive end. So the worse the shot, the worse your transition defense. And the better the look on the other end as McCray gets bumped as Richard now gets the assignment. Todd Golden's group up. Was second in offensive rebounds. And the only thing I can say about all that, that's a lot of production. Han Lockton is out for the rest of this season. So we won't see him this year. But I think Florida's backcourt is well equipped maybe to absorb some of the Zion pulling. It remains to be seen. Can they replace the Ty Tyrese Samuel production? Obviously bringing in Chinyelu, who started the night from Washington State, just a sophomore. Sam Alexis, the transfer from Chattanooga in that front court, the return of Hauk and Condon. Late in the clock again, Spence. Challenge look, Alexis the board. McCray getting a breather, but not the same offensive team. Lob it up top. It's Alexis who takes the back door. That's Walter Clayton Jr., the point guard. Yeah. That new role that Mark outlined in our open for Walter Clayton Jr. Already a thousand points scored three full years in college. Payne swallowed up by a double. And the interception. Richard leaks out, rises up top with two. That's a veteran play, really. And a timeout for the Dolphins. Will Richard, that's an improved element of his game defensively as he tries to take his game in the future to the next level. Watch Clayton, look at him observe. He didn't catch and put the ball on the deck. He caught the ball and evaluated. What did he see? He saw the lob was there and then Richard shoots the gap for the pick six, if you will. We're in football season, aren't we? <laughs> and Jordan Mincy with the quick timeout. Boy, there's a lot of points in this game so far. I'm not sure there's a lot of defense, but there's yeah. a lot of points early on. That was one of the biggest takeaways in that first half of the Gators, specifically transition defense. I want to ask you about Will Richard yeah. and what maybe his ceiling is this year and what you expect from him this season. I, th I think he had a very uneven season a year ago. I mean, he, he, he had six games of 20 or more. That's great but he had 10 games of five or less. Every coach wants to know what you're gonna get night in and night out. I think that's the key word for Will Richard. Can he be more consistent? Average over 11 per last year. His shooting percentage is down a bit from two years ago when he had career best shooting marks. And right now he's chasing McCray and doing a fine job. Alexis got in the passing lane. There's no reason to reach there. Talk about offensive patience. There's also su such a thing as defensive patience. Now, see if Florida will do a better job watching the lob. Jacksonville's already scored on it once. Into the corner, McCray has the speed mismatch with Hal. Five to shoot. Grinds into the lane. He got it swatted away by Alexis. And a nice effort play to scoop up the loose change and a foul. And that's the problem with getting in the bonus so early. You make a mistake foul like McCray did in backcourt. It's free throws. Take another look at the last defensive possession. Halk stayed down. The first thing that happened in that possession was Halk closed out so quick on McCray, he wasn't able to catch and shoot. And then he was able to keep McCray in front of him, and that led to the tough look. Tommy Houck, as they call him. Tommy for short, as Thomas, his full name, but he had a, an effort play in the opener against South Florida, diving to the floor headlong, and he's greeted by his head coach near midcourt, just slapping his hand multiple times, a video that went viral on social media. To the surprise of Todd Golden, he got shown the TikTok yesterday and had 900,000 views of that exchange between him and Tommy Howe. Now, Arias is getting a warning. I, I hate it when people block out and they actually bump the shooter. Doug Schaus is telling him right now, don't do that again. High scoring affair, midway mark, first half.
Bell screaming for it. Howell suffocating defense. Bell on the cut, fades and fires. Now, I like the look of their backboard. Bell, Spence. They've got some guys that can score. Alexis one on one with Payne lost it. They say last touch, Florida. McCray picked up that bad foul, was his second. Does he stay over there? I can't imagine that he stays on the bench the rest of the half. Foul trouble, a headline for Jordan Mincy's team. Already 18 fouls past the midway mark of the first. Gators just two. Bell lost his balance and threw it away. No miscommunication, that one-handed pass. Take a look at the fouls. When you get two quick ones, guess where you get the set? <laughs> it is hard to score, and as I say that, look who's coming back in. But now if you're Florida, you gotta go attack him, right? No, forget about that. You're just not playing play, that just play. Gotcha. Because college game's not wired that way. Yep. The NBA, oh yeah, that be, that this possession would only go to one place. Chinelu back at that five, Condon at the four. That Gator front court. Martin around a curl. Oh. Banked it in. Oh, the bank's open late at night. <laughs> he's going to call. He's going to claim that he called that, isn't he? <laughs> Help Florida Atlantic to a Final Four. It's a big piece. Had some really big scoring performances from that Final Four run. Gators another takeaway, and Martin fouled hard. That's Payne, just his first. I wouldn't be surprised if Jordan Mincy at some point in time went to a zone just to stop fouling. He's got his entire team huddled up. Martin at FAU averaged just a little more than 13 points a game. 75% at the free throw. Can be a streaky three-point shooter. We talked to Todd Golden yesterday. Mentioned that just a, a good match getting him in the transfer portal. Knew he could come here and win. He wants to be able to play off those hard ball screens. Of Todd Golden's offense and Kevin Hubdy's design. We got a chance to talk to Coach Hubdy yesterday. Is labeled as the offensive coordinator for a Gator offense that averaged 86 points per game last year. Program best. Kyle, the Gators are 9 of 13 at the free throw line, and their field goal percentage is better than that. <laughs> They've only missed two shots. Okeji had to rip it away from Condon. Again, getting late in the clock. Payne has to lob it out. Arias. There's that big court. guard yeah. rebounding again. Makes a big difference. Now sometimes Aberdeen dribbles and doesn't go anywhere. Richard goes to the rack, had it stripped. Arias, no look for Payne. Two big bodies on the interior. Stick back from McCray. No, Okeji doesn't get it to go. Dolphin ball. And a timeout. This one was back and forth early on. Gators extending this out to 11. Under eight media timeout. This game that I think has the, a chance to grow leap by leaps and bounds. Not really known a year ago with his thinner frame as a block to block score. But already tonight, Condon is going to the free throw line for the seventh and eighth times. It's a little bit banged up during fall camp, dealt with a, a knee issue. Getting back to full health. Early six points for Condon. The Chris Harry article that came out today, they were talking about some of the hard elbows from Kinyelu to Condon throughout practice, just having to guard each other. Right. Throughout the last few months. How physical those practices have been. So now Aberdeen is on McCray. Kind of the game within the game, if you will. Throwing different bodies his way. Munson. That's a tough shot. Tip back. Okeji 
Loose ball, Martin on the floor. And this will stop play, Tayo. Stay with the Dolphins. A season ago, Florida was an outstanding rebounding team. Their rebound margin was plus 6.5. That's second best for the whole season in league play. But so far this year, I think that's a challenge early on. Can this team rebound with a smaller lineup? McCray, strong take on the baseline and a foul. You remember Todd Golden's first season, that was the biggest area that needed improvement. Right. Rebounding was not in a good spot. He went to the transfer portal. Of course, Tyree Samuel, one of those biggest names, and they turned from one of the worst rebounding teams in the SEC right. to one of the best. Brought in Samuel and Hanlogden yep. as transfers, and then the two freshman combination guys in terms of Condon and how the four, as we called them a year ago, the four bouncy bigs. There's Micah. Had that leg fracture in the SEC Tournament Championship game. Such a big year, big presence in that starting lineup. And there is Olivier Ryu. 7-9. We are at practice yesterday, Mark, and they were playing five on five. He was standing right in front of me the whole time. Didn't see a thing. <laughs> Olivier, a walk on. Let's see him if this one gets out of hand late. He will be a rowdy reptile favorite for sure. And here's a shocker, but Jacksonville's going to go zone. A little two-three matchup. Tonkin attacks. Had his man Skyward and Munson. You know how impressive that is for a guy six foot eleven to have that kind of versatility. Here's Bell off the curl. Munson, Dolphin reset. Jacksonville starting to cool off after a hot start. Wheeler cross court, Bell. Has to hoist again, another tough shot. Bray's lucky he didn't get called for his third. Martin. It. Now explain to me how the same guy can shoot from the same spot and bank one in <laughs> and then hit nothing but net. Yeah, that one's good. That one's good <laughs> no matter what. I said he can be really streaky at the arc. Last year was a career low from three for him. Cray from way out there just trying to provide a spark. Borio, bucket. Yeah, that's a guy that can knock down shots, no question about it. Has a lot of international experience. Has that Brazilian flair prepped at North Broward. Started hoops a little bit late, around 12 years old. Richard, comfortable spot from the corner. That was wide open, nifty little pass by Martin. Now you see Clayton, the far side of your screen on McCray. We'll run them off screens, right, Mark? That's right. Nice job by Condon helping out. Great defense from Clayton. See, that'll never show up, but it was Condon's help. Clayton could not cap off that sequence. Was that three or four different bodies on McCray here in the first half, Mark? Yeah, they do a lot of switching anyway on the yep. perimeter, but you must Follow the scouting report with him at all times. It's Wheeler had it pinned up against the glass by Chinyelu. Martin on the break. Well, I wasn't a fan of that pass. Looks like after a miss, Jacksonville back in the man to man. Richard. Is that a little bit of a settle? I'm okay possession? with that though because it came out of the flow of the offense. The defender went under. Gators a massive struggle opening night from three. They're four of eight. Inside 10 to shoot. Hard screen. Borio gets the whistle. Relocate. 
Richard was looking for somebody on the hammer action to the opposite corner. How about this stat on your screen right now? 10 offensive rebounds for Jacksonville here in the first half. Oh, I promise you that's going to be on a board in the locker room. Led to nine second chance points. The Dolphins stick around here late in the first half. Okeji rattles around. And that's a good looking stroke. Man. That's the second time Florida's got an outlet pass deflected. That's just carelessness. That's a pass you get away with in practice that doesn't work in a game. Get a foul here. Martin sneaking around to follow Jakari Spence. There's Kevin Hubby. We talked to him yesterday. You get the sense. You could talk to him about two and a half hours just worth of <laughs> ball. He is a big time offensive coach, probably one of the great young offensive minds in college hoops. And let's remember this entire staff has returned. Yeah. That doesn't always happen either. John Andercheck, the defensive coordinator as well. His second season coming over from Washington State, Carlin Hartman, Corey McCray, Torian Green is back for another year, helps in the player development area. Victor Lopez back as the strength coach. Spence with one, he's got to get rid of it. Don't think that got up in time. I think they're going to look at that at the break. The danger with zoning is you're almost encouraging a Walter Plate Clayton three. Now. There's Alexis. Something you always taught me against the zone, get the ball underneath the free throw line. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be in against that 2-3, those weak spots are the free throw line and the short corners. See, I learned from you. Thank you. Know you. Thank you. We work together enough where I've learned some of the things you're saying over the years. <laughs> Or you just get tired of me saying <laughs> a leak out. Here's Martin. Showtime! Well, that's the beauty of bringing in Elijah Mark. He gives this Gator team a defensive presence on the perimeter they did not have a year ago. Game high, 13 points for Elijah Martin. Chris Arias skitters out. Again, the Gators go quick. This offense always that extra pass. Clayton stop and start. Horton. But what a fun possession. Yep. Full of extra passes, looking for a teammate. Talk to Kevin Hudley. He mentions the hockey assist a lot. The assist to the assist. You go to any practice, that ball's whipping around. And Jacksonville could have gone two for one. Inside 10 to shoot again. Another late in the clock possession. Three to shoot. Bell steps in just past the reach of Howell. Double team was probably a little too high on the court. Nice job by the Dolphins to reverse the ball. Gators can hold for the final shot here in the opening half. A half mark, they've shot nearly 70%. Brett, the Dolphins, they're still within striking distance here. Just a 14 point game. Now with two, Clayton. Missed everything. Stick back. Wave it off. It was Richard not in time. All things considered, a lot of positives. Some things to look at if you're Todd Golden and the Gators going into the break. I'm sure they're going to talk about the doing a line. Now let's see if JU maybe starts the zone, the, the half in a zone, see if they can get Florida a little bit stationary offensively. Foul trouble was the issue for the Dolphins. They had four different players with two fouls. Nobody with three yet. Gators will start Clayton, Martin, Condon, Richard, and Chinyelu. Looks like, right to your point, Mark, zone look here for the Dolphins. Yeah, you don't see this a lot. Original starting five for Jacksonville as well. Bill, oh, yeah, combination defense, now man to man. Foul here, that's Spence, that's just his first. I gotta tell you, I love the call by Jordan Mincy with the little combo defense in the very first possession. Played about the first 15 seconds in zone and then switched to the man. 
NC in his return, three previous seasons, one of the best defensive teams in the Atlantic Sun, consistently. Gone and thought about it. Clayton attacks in, Chinyelu off the glass. That's that creative explosiveness that Clayton can do off the bounce, not only to create for his others, uh, excuse me, for himself, but for others as well. Thirty-eight percent of the first half of the Dolphins from the floor. Rokeji, a big three. Yeah, that's just not quick awareness defensively, a pick and pop. Found a nice move. I thought that ball got hit after it went on the glass. It should have counted twice. <laughs> well, Condon ready in double figures now with 10. Okaji, does he have another little heat check? Clayton Long feed. Condon the catch and the finish. The vision from Walter Clayton Jr. That's the new wave of defensively challenging a three to fly by and just keep going. Walter Clayton tested the NBA draft waters along with Will Richard this offseason. Liking to come back to Florida, working specifically even more on his defense and that court vision that Mark talked about. Big takeaway, another long lead, Richard, the slam! Again, good defense sometimes can help out your offense. Jordan Mency needs an early timeout. That's the third steal for Elijah Martin. Gator is up 19. I talk about helping out your offense sometimes. Let your deep 33 consecutive home openers in your program's history. Up 19. So Kyle, why was in the offseason most of the discussion by Todd Golden getting better defensively? Defensively because they were 11th in points scored, they were 11th in field goal percentage defense, they were sixth in terms of guarding the arc. All those numbers has to get better. Yeah, it was a generational offense paired with a defense that was lacking at times. So in the NCAA pass. tournament game. Spence has to fly by, you get a foul on the floor, they just might be Clayton underneath. And they had two guys flying at the shooter. Awfully tough to rebound that way. McCray. A block from Condon. Payne. Stick back. Oh, nice job of Payne sticking with it there. They have 15 of the first half of the opener as Clayton takes a hard spill. Take another look at Payne inside. Got the first shot blocked by Condon from behind. But well, actually he got fouled. Talked to Coach Mincy earlier today. Mentioned him about Payne. Bigger role this year. A lot more demanding role for him. You ask anybody. He's the leader on the floor. Big body right now matched up with Chinyelu. That may go in. <laughs> post to post, finds Richard up and under. There wasn't anything pretty about that <laughs> possession until the made pass. <laughs> I thought that pass by Chin Yalu was a Went little in. wayward. Well, Richard now with 11. Much greater attention to detail on McRae than Florida had against USF. Boy, how hard does he have to work tonight off screens? Well, KG might have gotten tipped by Condon. So here's an example. Clayton has a point guard bringing the ball up the floor, leading the break. He's got great court vision, sees all other nine players on the floor. The thing that will be a challenge for Todd Golden as this season unfolds with Clayton at the point Sometimes it's hard to get your point guard shots because the offense, if your point guard initiates your offense, the offense has to get back around to your point guard. 
We talked to Kevin Hugdy yesterday. He mentioned something about their transition offense. Bigs on a string, right? right. Going to that early post-up. That's something you saw there. They didn't do a whole lot in the South Florida game, but getting the ball to the big on the block in transition. Yeah, when, when, and when he's talking about on a string, immediately high-low. Right. Because one guy, and they don't care who takes the ball out. They don't care who rebounds, as long as somebody rebounds. But they want that high-low established as soon as possible. And the one big that's not inbounding, you better run. Yes. I will forever call that the Udonis Haslam. Yep. Run to the rim and plant that big rear in the paint <laughs> and dare people to get around you. It's a good formula. McCray finally has space. Now that's a man's rebound there. Mind you, that Patrick Young foot does he not work. A little bit. Has a lot to do to get to the career Patrick Young had, of course. Eight or great. And that hedge will take the ball out of Clayton's hand. Chinyelu into a double. Out of trouble. Really impressed with Jacksonville's ability to jump from one possession to the next. Todd Golden and his team will meet up. This media timeout, Gator is stretching this out. But to be willing to take your team on the road on opening night, I think, speaks volumes. Missouri did the exact same thing, played pretty well at Memphis. Memphis won kind of at the end. But uh, the thing that stands out to me, and, and, and I hate to sound like Damian Fishback so early in the season, but I think the league has a chance to get a record number of teams in the dance. Now, a lot of water has to obviously flow under the bridge. Late in the clock here, here's McCray on Clayton. Chinyelu on the swat, do they call a goaltend? I believe they did. All right, Mark, I wanted to ask you this. Just how yeah. good is Alabama this year? Well, I, first of all, when you bring back maybe the player of the year, there's nobody picks up Richard. Again, I'm okay with that shot because he was wide open. But when you bring back the maybe the player of the year and Mark Sears and you put the style of play and the bodies that they have around Grant Nelson returns, right side returns, they've got outstanding freshmen. They're legit. And they, they have scheduled the right way. They, they're going to push that team. Janai Broom returns at Auburn. Chad Baker Mazzara, who I think is one of the biggest mismatches in the, in the uh, league. There's a lot of good things happening in the league in hoops this year. The Gators preseason top 25 and pick sixth in the SEC. Watch, oh, you got to shoot that, man. Clayton keeps it in the holster. Out. Tornadoes gives for Condon. Aberdeen caught in a tough spot. Shot clock at five, Martin. Rowdy's right behind us, Mark, in mid-season form. <laughs> Spence and McCray have shot air balls in this game. They're hearing it. McCray knifes in, soars up, and one. It's okay to run McCray off the line. You've won that battle, but then don't give him an and one opportunity. But he shows you how many different ways he can score. I looked at him for a lot of, of, of of time on synergy and was trying to figure out, okay, does he only go left? Does he only go right? Where does he like? I mean, this dude is a complete package. And he'll get looked at. Could he be the first NBA draft pick to come from Jacksonville University since 1992? Wow. Averaged over 18 points per game last year. One of the best single season scoring outputs in Dolphin history. Nice job against the press, being patient. I don't know about that shot, though. Oh, just so gun shot. Yeah, perhaps maybe too unselfish. Well, that's part of learning how to play as a point guard. But you get an offensive rebound, and the ball gets kicked back out to you. Let it fly. And here's Jacksonville just kind of being the hang-around yep. team. That line to tiptoe 
for Walter Clayton Jr. between being right. the facilitating point guard, the floor general, and the elite scorer that he is. That is going to be the ultimate battle for him all year, just like, personal. You were there yesterday when I asked Todd Golden, what's the fine line between playing fast and shot selection? And he and what was his answer? It was like, oh yeah, that's a really fine line. <laughs> Good for Condon to knock down two after going five for ten. Condon's taken 12 attempts from the line. He's had 15 points. That's two off a career high and 13 in the opener. Gators three in double figures. Here's this fun matchup again. Elijah Martin guarding Robert McCray. McCray, extra bounce, Wheeler. Oreo, Alexis skying high, but it's out with the block from behind. But how about the ball movement, though, by Jacksonville? On point. So many times the ball gets stuck offensively. Take another look from behind. Seventh Gator swat. Late in the clock, McCray. Rebound, Payne. Fresh 20. Mismatch. Clayton is caught with size on a Munson. Got a shot deterred by Howell. He's saying, I didn't touch it. Doug Schaus with the call on the baseline. Certainly not reviewable at this stage of the game. You're not winning that argument, <laughs> Tom Howell. Talked a lot about Robert McCray, but he sure had his pick of the litter in the transfer portal. Some of his sisters go to Jacksonville University. That led to his decision to stick around. Maybe perhaps not take that NIL money. Martin down the lane, scoops and scores. I really like the fact that Elijah Martin, Walter Clayton Jr., even Will Richard, they have a great ball fake game. Get defenders to bite, leave the floor, blow by. They combine for 67 in the opener. Clayton Richard and Martin tonight combined for 31. And I think we're also seeing the beauty, if you will, of Robert McCray because he has decided, okay, you're going to choke me off at the three-point line, fine. I'm going to show you I can get there and score in different ways. Spent one year at Wake Forest, didn't play a whole lot, just 14 games under two points per game, and then came here and really has opened eyes and NBA scouts eyes. And he's a willing passer. He had 94 assists last year for a guy that averaged almost 19 a game. Mark, that was a sensational yeah, move from McCray. Still sticking around. 17-point Gator lead. The yeah, Aberdeen runs the point, so that allows Clayton to move off the point. Richard. Shovel off Alexis with contact. Shot clock at five. Aberdeen. Now puts it back in. Only one on the timer. But right now, I think McCray feels like nobody can guard him. It find its way back to number 13 in green. Far side of your screen. Wheeler. Deep in the shot clock. Borio, big strides in the lane, up and under. <laughs> and the little soccer header to yes. for the Brazilian. Alexis and one. Back and forth we go. That's the rim run you were talking about earlier. Unless your big is willing to work to get open to initiate the offense. Just holding your hand out to throw it here, that usually doesn't get it done. Alexis, Johnny on the spot. Slimmed down a little bit, did Alexis during the offseason. Are you SoCom player? You, excuse me, Kyle, you talked about him coming from Chattanooga. Yeah. I think the biggest question, because we're, we're, we're seeing this all of the best players at the mid major level, can they play up? And so far, the answer with Alexis is yes. 
Comes back to his home state as well, Popka, Florida. Another rim protector in that front court. Lead out to 21. To the post for Payne. Two feet in the paint. Pretty good play by Alexis. Challenge the shooter and grab the rebound. And then make a three. Rebound McCray. Deep in the shot clock again, Arias. Okeji well, got blocked by Alexis. Does Clayton get a shot here? He does. Gotta be one of his first attempts of this half. Great Boy. shot by McCray. What a fun guy to watch. He is left-handed. That was a, like a right-handed 10-foot leaner with traffic. The most points in a single season for J.U. You have to go back to 2015-16. Now, extending his range. Scored 91 total points in their A-Sun tournament run. They're game shy of the championship game. They almost snuck their way into the NCAA tournament. Yeah, they lost on the last shot by Stetson. Of course, Stetson coached by Donnie Jones who went on to play in the NCAA tournament, won the ace on turning. Long lead for Richard, makes the catch, repositions, dances out. That'll hit the shot clock, and then Stetson had to go and get the award of playing UConn in the first round, right, Mark? Yeah, there were a lot of people that ran into that <laughs> juggernaut. I, I did Illinois and Ole Miss in the exhibition. Illinois had a great year, went to the Elite Eight until UConn came to town. Can UConn three-peat this year? I, I think they're in the conversation. I, 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 again, all the loss production that they've had over the last couple of years, that's going to be tougher and tougher to do. I think that's one of the great storylines. I think in the Big Ten, life after Zach yeah. is a big storyline. Throwing hands from Martin Wheeler somehow keeps it. Munson, air ball, add him to the list to be chanted at shot clock violation. Perhaps maybe down the line a project for sure, Olivier yeah. Ryu, but you mentioned Zach Eady. Yeah, remember, Eady is 7-4. And I'm glad to see that he has made it. I mean, he got yeah. taken in the first round late, but he's going to play minutes. We'll see, dependent on the score, if we see Ryu tonight, tallest player in college basketball. Yeah, I think this is good practice. Look out. Right to you, Mark. I was just about to say this is good practice for Florida to go against a little pressure in backcourt. That did not make the head gator very happy, nor should it have. Gators, eight turnover. Cray trying to take over in the second half. Another long lead for a running big. It's Condon. Yeah, that's that rim run that you talked about with Kevin Hubby. One big runs to the rim. The other will trail the play and be part of the high-low set. Right now Condon out the four, Chinyelu out there at the five. Bell, two-man game with Payne. Condon. Yep. How was that practice yesterday? Condon shot lights out. So I was a little surprised he struggled at the free throw line tonight. A year ago, he was just under 30%. I expect that number to go up. New career high for Alex Condon. 20 even on that three. 
place where he doesn't usually do his business from the arc. Perhaps improved in that area, Alex Condon, a career night. Young sophomore in transition, shoots this in rhythm with confidence, knocks down the three ball. Florida. Turn. Gators will have Rambling coming up on Monday night. You and I'll be right here. That's right. Can't wait for that one. That's not where you want the ball. Richard went falling down into the scores table. Oh! oh! A poster oh! for Zach Bell! Oh my goodness! Was that quick? Again, fake a pass, and here's back to back turnovers by Richard. Sloppy sequence. But the Dolphins give it right back as Zach rings the bell in a big way. Keep your eye on high-flying Zach Bell, the junior from South Carolina. Elevates and throws down. I started to say the first rule of thumb against pressure in a zone press is fake a pass to make a pass. Then you've got to have the correct spacing. Much better. First break at this time. See if Florida will get the ball in the middle to Condon and operate from there. That's dangerous. Chinielo in deep. Missed everything. Still working on that offensive game his sophomore year. No McCray on the floor right now. Dolphins leading score and a turnover. Rivers throws it away. There's Robert McCray. You've been impressed with him tonight. 16. 26 minutes. The most impressive thing to me, he hasn't forced the issue. Clayton. Clayton in an early three. He's been silent since. Condon from the logo. Yeah. Another adding to the career night for number 21. Now, if he starts knocking that down on a consistent basis as a stretch four or a stretch five, watch out. Perfect seven of seven. This will stay with the Dolphins. It's almost like everywhere there's a loose ball, Elijah Martin is somehow involved. Condon, Australian for three. Remember those commercials, Mark? I was just hoping you would get that <laughs> Very reference. Very good. Very good. McCray back in. Gators have shot it better from three from the opener. It's seven. Four to shoot now. McCray, late hoist. Gator ball. Todd Golden, six top 25 wins in his two plus seasons. Fastest Florida coach to get to that mark at Ford them last year. Think of that big win at Rupp Arena last year. It's a top 10 Kentucky team. And they take that next step in the NCAA tournament. First things first, like Mark says, enjoy the journey. Yeah, I listen. Thank you. Good ball movement again. Condon. Richard. Ball zipping around. This has been a fun matchup. McCray and Martin. Goes to the left hand with the finish. He can finish with both. Is he earning these, though? Hard earn 18, and Clayton staples one down. Again, how about the versatility of Condon? Be a rim runner and then find a streaking teammate. First bucket of the half for Walter Clayton Jr. Let's have six assists. Any doubt? 
and another. He's got 20. Well, him and Martin are really going at it now. It's the game within the game. Just stared him down after that bucket. Quick load up. All right, folks, watch this matchup. All right now, Martin off the ball, and it's Clayton. Arias, well off. Both sides look a little gas to me right now. On the roll, Chinyelu. Too easy. That was a call from the bench, though, in terms of getting into the horn set, getting into the operation that they wanted to run. Good execution, good find by Clayton. Solid night for Chinyelu, six points, six boards. There's Martin again, disrupted defensively. Clayton, oh! oh! <laughs> Climbs the ladder! Walter Clayton Jr. That has to be revived. Boy. He knew as soon as he entered the lane, he was set for takeoff. Perhaps capping his night. Two and a half to go. Isaiah Brown getting his first action as a collegiate gator. And a freshman off for the first time from Orlando. You know what I think about that. Get it and chuck it, right? Yeah, there's no such thing as a good pass. Kaius Kubliskis, also number 30 in white on the floor. That's what I'm talking about. There yeah. it is, Mark Wise at it. Help. And a foul. Night for Walter Clayton Jr. Shy of double figures, though. Seven assists. And I'm sure he's going to feel good at how his night is. Kind of funny because he only got nine points tonight. But that's the play everybody will see for the next two or three days. And the chance mark for the walk-ons begin here, just right. under the two-minute mark. Florida has not shot free throws as well as they did in the open. Olivier Ryu, one of those walk-ons. Alex Klatsky, I believe he's on Mike White's staff now at Georgia. Time walk on here at Florida. And fan favorite. Big time Rowdy Reptile favorite. New Dolphins on the floor. Tito Dang misses the jumper. Ken Jackson. Got it. Absolutely. He took nine threes against Trinity Baptist the other day. Only made a couple, but a three point specialist. Played 20 minutes in the opener. One of his first minutes. In this one, the Bliskis no look for Brown. Got his man in the air. Got hacked. Brown, the freshman from Orlando, played at OCP, Orlando Christian Prep, where they were state runner up, and had some international experience playing for Puerto Rico in the under 18 America. And this will be hard to come by in the backcourt this year. Yeah, it's a tough rotation. Yeah. Track. Todd Golden was confident. He said at some point they think that Zay Brown might have a chance to maybe crack the rotation. That's a that's a really good trio right there. And you throw in Condon in the mix. We had a career night. Coming up, Grambling on Monday, then Florida State. Friday the 15th. That Grambling, just like Jacksonville, they have the preseason player of the year in the SWAC returning. So it's going to be somewhat similar in terms of a scouting report.
There's Dang using that length to not come up with it. That 6'11 frame. And here, Todd Golden, are you happy about tonight? Uh, not the rebound. No. Uh, the defense was poor the first night, the rebounding the second night. I'll tell you who I was really impressed with tonight Robert McCray for Jacksonville. This is a, a big stage, especially for Let NBA Scouts. There it is. Ray really had to grind out 20, 29 minutes. And Jackson, that's the let it fly, Mark Wise motto. I told you, three point specialist. 6 0 spurt to end it for Jacksonville. Todd Golden, Jordan Mincy, and his return to Gainesville and Brace. And the Gators win this one going away. 34 straight home opening wins, Mark. And the Gators to 2 0. Well, you can't be undefeated in March if you're not 2 0 in November. So that's a good starting point, is it not? Uh, you know, obviously, a lot of things to work on. They're still adjusting, moving Walter Clayton to the point. I think we'll see more of that on Monday night and get a better eval. Alex Condon, a career night, 23 points for Jeremy Otter, our producer, Scott Snyder, our director, our entire fantastic crew, working not one but two games here tonight. Gators win this one going away from Mark Wise on Kyle Brooks saying so long and good night from Gainesville. Gators moving on at 2-0. Aí é pulsar, pulsar.